Welcome viewers. Our guest today is Mr. Matt Preprost, Managing Editor of Alaska Heavy News. Thank you for coming to our program. Thanks, Faisal. Happy to be here. Excellent. So, first of all, please tell us about your professional background as a journalist. Uh, well, Faisal, I've been doing this since uh, actually the first kind of paid gig I actually got doing this job. Uh, goes back to 2008, so I'm coming up on uh, nearly a decade decade now. I started back at in, uh, in Winnipeg at the Winnipeg Free Press there when I was in, in college. I got an internship, so I've been doing this for about uh, 10 years. Worked with Winnipeg Free Press till about 2013, and then I uh, moved up to Fort St. John and have been here ever since. Excellent. And when did you discover your passion for photography? I learned that on the job. You know, I, I went to school, I, you know, I wanted to go, go into filmmaking, so I've always been interested in, in capturing images, right? Um, didn't go to film school. Uh, I turned my, my, my attention to kind of towards communications and worked with my student newspaper in university and fell in love with journalism there. Um, went through the program. I mean, they teach you how to do photography, but it was kind of... For me, it was just classwork, and then I got, you know, kind of my first job, and I needed a camera with that job, so I went out and bought a, bought a brand new camera, and just learned on the job, and um, have been doing that ever since, right? So I like uh, taking uh, good portraits of, of the people in our community. Thank you. And what are your responsibilities at the Alaska Highway News? At the Alaska Highway News, I'm the I'm the managing editor. So you know, I work with uh, with our team of reporters. We have a news reporter, and, and we have a brand new sports reporter as well. Um, I work with them kind of on the week to week to to kind of prioritize uh, the most important stories um, that are happening in our community, or the most important people that we need to be featuring that week for one reason or another. Um, something going on maybe at city council or something going on in the sports world. Um, so I do that on the day to day. I help put out, uh, put together the paper um, um, as well. And then I do report, you know, as well. So you'll often see me at city council meetings. You'll see me at the school board meetings. Um, and then you'll often see me just kind of bouncing around town with my camera in hand uh, and my notepad as well. What developments have occurred at Alaska Heavy News in the last few years? Uh, that's a good question. You know, actually, um, just um, a year ago, we uh, we put out uh, our first kind of brand new weekly edition. Last year, uh, we, we we changed our format from a daily newspaper to uh, to a weekly newspaper that you know kind of freed up our time from from working the desk a little bit too much and allows us to to be in the community more and deliver kind of more local news on the week to week. Um, so we're literally coming up on that uh, one year anniversary here uh, here today on, on March 31st. We put out that first issue. We're going into that second year. Um, that's kind of been you know the biggest change um, for us. Uh, the Alaska Highway News we started as a weekly newspaper way back in uh, in the early 1940s. Um, so kind of for us it's uh, it's back to tradition and it's going it's going really well. Thank you. And. How can newspapers develop in today's electronic age, in your opinion? There's room for both. Um, you know, there, there, there's still value and there's still a market, you know, for, um, for a print product. Um, um, but there's also, again, as we all know, increasing value and increasing demands um, um, in the digital world, especially, you know, kind of on social media and Facebook is, is kind of feeding that uh, frenzy, so to speak. You know, kind of for us, you know, um, it's a balance of, of kind of um, looking at what mediums we publish through. Again, we, we have two mediums here, right? I mean, w w you know, we, ha we have online, and that's grown exponentially, even, even since, you know, kind of I've been in school or even since I was in high school. Um, over a decade ago now, uh, but there's still value in the print product. So for us, it's, it, it's looking at, okay, what medium are we publishing a story to and why? With, with, the, with the digital and electronic age, it's feeding into that whole 24-7 uh, news cycle, right, and, and, and breaking news. And, and so that's what the internet's really good for. Um, for us, where we see the value in print is where we can take either breaking news stories or, you know, um, stories that haven't been told and we tell them first through um, our print product because they're not necessarily breaking news like a car crash or a fire or a major police incident or anything that kind of needs to get out to the public right away that... Uh, when we publish weekly, we have a little bit more time to develop our stories and talk to sources and um, spend time instead of rushing um, to get that breaking information out out there. So, for us, that's that's how we balance. That's how we balance the demands of both of those mediums. Thank you. And how do you balance news <coughs> with 
sports and local events? Uh, that's a good question. So like like I said, there's there's myself and you know as an editor, you know, I do I do my my part in covering the news in in the community. I've been here going on 4 years now, so I know a lot and I know a lot of people. We do have a news reporter as well um, who helps uh, she covers but you know, Alicia she, she was on the show a few months ago. She covers news and arts and culture and, and things that are happening in the community. And then we also have a dedicated sports reporter as well. So right now we have kind of a four-page sports section. But over the next coming months, we're looking at, we're always looking at how can we build our product? How can we give the community more? So we're going to be thinking of ways of um, delivering more sports content and more sports stories and coverage to the community on the week-to-week. -week. Um, but for us... Between the three of us, we kind of balance it all out. So the one guy, he focuses on the sports. Me and Alicia, we kind of focus on the news and everything else that's going on. So. Thank you. Yeah. And how was your experience covering the three Cs, city, community, and crime? <laughs> yeah. Um, Overall, my, my experience, you know, has been has been pretty positive. I see, yeah, you, know, you, you took that from my from my resume. No, that's uh, that's very good. Um, those are the most interesting things, you know, things for me. You know, when I was was a young reporter, kind of growing up, you kind of you're just starting out and you're trying to get a feel of what exactly you want to do. And and crime has always been something that's fascinated me. When I was a little kid, I wanted to be a police officer, right? And I think a lot of kids, you know, at some point you know, want to want to be that. And then, you know, I wanted to be a lawyer, a criminal defense lawyer and and and, uh, and that. And and so, uh, you know, crime and, and criminal justice matters have always been, you know, really important to me because I think you can spend a day, you know, in the courts in Fort St. John and learn a lot about what's happening in Fort St. John, uh, you know, across a whole wide spectrum from, you know, kind of issues, you know, around um, around the drug trade, to issues around just kind of domestic violence, to issues around um, even family law, right? So they're interesting, the, the crime is, is gives us an interesting snapshot of society, I think. Um, City-wise, I love politics. Um, well, love-hate relationship, but uh, um, I've always been kind of interested in that because, I mean, obviously, a public policy has, um, can have dramatic effects on me and you and, and obviously kind of the viewers, um, whatever policies on the provincial, federal, or even municipal level, right? It impacts everybody. So it's important um, to everybody. And I, and I like kind of keeping up with that stuff and, and learning how cities develop and, and, and the choices they make um, when they make new bylaws and, and all these kind of things. On the community end, um, that's where we kind of make our connections and, and and you know, and, and, and where you have fun. The beauty of this job is that, you know, um, you meet new people every day. And every day is kind of a new experience. So um, it's just good to kind of get out there and, and, you know, kind of obviously put a face to a name in the paper, in the newspaper, but also, you know, put a, put a face to our, you know, our paper overall and kind of engage with the community and, and tell their stories. You know, ultimately at the end of the day, what we're here, you know, we're, we call ourselves reporters and journalists. I like to call ourselves storytellers sometimes because at the end of the day, what we're doing is telling the story of the community and, uh, and how it's growing year to year, week to week, day to day. Um, yeah. Thank you. And what different areas of journalism have you covered so far? Uh, you know, I've, <laughs> I, you know, I've, I, you know, I've covered it all, you know, uh, you know, when I was, you know, really, when I, you know, I first started out and you're kind of getting, getting your footing in this industry, you're covering a lot of the, a lot of the colorful stories, you know, you're covering the, the midway fairs and, and, you know, the rodeos and the science fairs, community, community events, you know, kind of like that. And then you go up, you know, and you start covering council, maybe cover provincial politics and, um, and that kind of thing. So, you know, I've, I've covered it all, like I said, literally from midway fairs to, you know, I've knock, I've had to, you know, knock on the doors of, uh, the family of, you know, murder victims to, you know, I've, you know, worked the phone lines, you know, calling remote First Nations communities, you know, in Manitoba, you know, trying to uh, learn what's going on there, especially if there's a tragedy in that community, to covering city council, to covering, you know, Darlene Jakubowski, who just returned home from the Special Olympics World Winter Games and, and you know, brings home a gold medal. So, literally, cover everything. Great. 
And what has inspired you to work 24-7, 365 in often, I would say, in risky and icy driving conditions? Yeah, well, the winter. Yeah, the winter is the winter's another story. Uh, hmm. uh, I try not to work 24-7, right, because everybody needs uh, their sleep and their downtime. But if you want to report on the community um, that you know, that you're serving as, as, as a media outlet, you know, you kind of, you got to invest your time in the community outside the office, you know. Being a reporter, being a journalist, it's not necessarily a nine-to-five desk job. Um, certainly there is an office and, 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 and there, are, there are newsrooms, right, but you got to think of, you know, um, being active in the community. So um, even kind of during your shift and going out there and finding news and talking to people that other people aren't. But even beyond that, you know, how, how as, a, as a reporter and a storyteller and a journalist you um, involve yourself in the community, right? So a lot of extracurriculars and volunteering, and that's where you get to meet new people, especially when you're with a new town, right? Um, that, that's very critical and very important. So, um, Again, I wouldn't say it's kind of 24-7, but you do have to invest a lot of time because it is a, 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 very, a very important position in the community. Um, so you need to invest a lot of time outside as well. Thank you. And you have <coughs> won several awards. Please tell us a little about these awards. Yeah. Um, actually, you know, um, later uh, in April, actually, at the end of April, um, I'm going to be going down to uh, Vancouver for the... Uh, BC and Yukon Newspaper Association Ma Murray Awards and uh, the Alaska Highway News uh, we've been nominated for three awards so uh, well, my reporter uh, Alicia Hendry has been nominated for a columnist of the year I've been nominated for uh, best breaking news photo um, of the year and then we're also nominated for a general excellence um, award um, which kind of just looks at the newspaper as a whole. Um, so I'll be going down and uh, um, kind of accepting those awards um, at the end of uh, April, like I said, in Vancouver. And then, you know, before that, you know, so these are my first kind of awards in BC. And like I said, I'm going on four years here now. So um, it's tough competition here. Um, but it is, it is everywhere. Before I came here, I'd won, um, I'd won eight awards back in Manitoba for my work, you know, so I won awards for, for my photography. I won, I've won awards for, you know, my reporting on First Nations, um, reporting on some business issues in the community. Um, I think I, yeah, have won one for um, environment writing and then as well, just kind of general newspaper excellence awards. So, um, Excellent. Yeah, yeah. And finally, Matt, what's your message for fellow journalists? You know, um, I've, my message for fellow journalists is, is you know, never, never stop asking questions and, and always keep uh, writing and, and, more importantly, always, always keep reading. You know, um, you know, as journalists, we play an important role, obviously, in this community. Um, not a lot of people um, get to enjoy, you know, sifting through city council reports or, or sifting through, you know, court documents and, and finding important uh, stories that are happening kind of in our communities and, and, uh, and have the chance to be able to tell those stories and, and tell readers why things are happening and what it might mean kind of for them or the, or the larger community, you know, as a whole. So uh, I think that would be my message, Faisal. Thank you, Matt, for coming to our program and thank you for your services. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Faisal.